live now, ladies and gentlemen. A uh, very, very warm welcome to all of you on this uh, afternoon. Uh, in Delhi, the weather has taken a very pleasant turn, even as we uh, continue to uh, struggle to get the pandemic situation under control. Uh, a very, very warm welcome to you. Good evening, India. Good afternoon, Europe. Uh, good morning elsewhere. Uh, excellencies, distinguished panelists, friends from India and all over the world, ladies and gentlemen. It's delightful to see so many people from different geographies at this important virtual conversation on the future trajectory of the multifaceted partnership between the two largest democratic spaces in the world, India and the European Union. When we talk about India and the European Union, uh, we are talking about close to 1.8 billion people. And in terms of sheer economic weight, we, India and the EU uh, put together accounts for something like uh, $21 trillion GDP. It's enormously gratifying for me to see so many friends from India, Europe, and other geographies who have found time to be with us today. Uh, we are live streaming this uh, webinar on important platforms, uh, Facebook Live, YouTube and Twitter of India Rights Network. If you have difficulty in accessing it on any one platform, please move to another platform. We are extremely fortunate and privileged to see such a stellar cast of distinguished speakers to discuss issues relating to the India-EU partnership. Allow me to briefly mention them. His Excellency Ugo Astuto, Ambassador of EU to India, his ex Her Excellency Romana Blahutin, EU's Ambassador at Large for Connectivity, uh, dear friend Mr. Sandeep Chakravati, Joint Secretary Europe West, Ministry of External Affairs India, uh, His Excellency Vincenzo Di Luca, Italy's Ambassador to India, His Excellency Mr. Freddy Swan, Denmark's Ambassador to India, His Excellency Carlos Pereira Marquez, Portugal's Ambassador to India. I will introduce them in greater detail when I ask them to speak. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, before I start and dive into the main theme of the conference, a few words about our organization and myself. Uh, my name is Manish Chan, I'm founder and CEO of India Rights Network, an emerging think tank and publishing media platform focused on international affairs. We also publish India and the World, a magazine journal that has carved a niche among the diplomatic and strategic community in India. We have recently set up Center for Global India Insights, a think tank that focuses on geopolitics and actionable foreign policy analysis. Our core areas of activities include IR research, publishing, media, and conferencing. In the past few months, we organized many well-appreciated and well-attended webinars on mapping next steps in India-Africa partnership from G7 to G11, India-Italy partnership, future of India-US relations under President Joe Biden, and the way forward for India-Bangladesh relations, just to mention a few. We also co-hosted a webinars with our partners, uh, the High Commission of Canada and India on topical themes, portrayal of environment-related issues in the media separate. These webinars were marked by the participation of eminent speakers and unfettered discussion. We hope that our webinar today on the India-EU relations will live up to our reputation and raise the bar for informed discussion on foreign policy issues. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, now let me come to the master theme of the webinar, India-EU 2.0, New Synergies, New Horizons. By all reckoning, the India-EU leaders meeting on May 8, 2021 was a pivotal moment and an inspired exercise in transformational diplomacy. In a unique gesture that underscored the rising importance of India in the EU's foreign policy calculus, the leaders meeting was the first ever summit between the two largest democratic spaces in the 27 plus one format. It's only the second time the EU had such a 27 plus summit with any other country after the United States. 
the optics were captivating prime minister narendra modi had a virtual face to face interaction with leaders of 27 european nations as well as charles michel president of the european council and ursula von der leyen president of the european commission there were many special and memorable gestures the portuguese port city of porto was lit up in the colors of the indian flag belgian prime minister alexander de croo greeted prime minister modi with came show in gujarati and portuguese prime minister antonio costa in the presence of all leaders proudly flaunted his overseas citizen of india card it wasn't just spectacle and convivial virtual chatter though but the summit resulted in a string of defining steps that is going to scale up india eu partnership to higher stratosphere what we are calling today the 2.0 version this 2.0 version of the india eu strategic partnership will include among others a transformational and balanced fta enhanced international coordination and a landmark connectivity partnership that involves partnering in joint infrastructure projects in third countries the summit's other key outcomes included setting up of a task force on artificial intelligence and a joint working group on resilient supply chains in other words the first 27 plus 1 summit has raised the bar and set new benchmarks for the india eu economic and strategic partnership but looking ahead the real challenge lies in time bound implementation of key outcomes as this alone can fructify benefits of india eu partnership to people of the two sides the discussions today are designed to precisely achieve this uh, picking the brains of some of our finest diplomats from india and eu and strategic experts to chart an actionable road map for advancing the 2025 india eu agenda here i would like to urge each speaker to come out with specific concrete suggestions and initiatives which will enable us to add more heft and substance to this blossoming partnership i would also urge this speaker to come out with some new ideas to scale up visibility and projection of the multifaceted india eu partnership across the spectrum this is important as despite the growing partnership there is limited public awareness of the eu as an institution in india and europe in general beyond a few beautiful tourist countries the bargaining partnership in the end between the two normative powers dedicated to promoting rules based international order will not only benefit over 1.8 billion people living in india and eu countries but also the region and the world before i request our keynote ambassador uh, keynote speaker the ambassador of eu to india to speak let me briefly outline some housekeeping rules so you know i mean to our audience uh, you can type in your questions comments in the facebook and youtube link with your name and designation our team will collect it and will pose it to the speaker when we come to the audience round you can also send questions to india rights group .gmail.com uh the sec uh, and, and you know we also encourage you to tweet about the webinar so that we reach out to a larger audience please do not forget to tag at the rate of india rights tgii on twitter handle and uh my request to media person journalists who are attending this webinar that we really appreciate uh, some coverage of the webinar in your respective media platforms uh thanks so much to all of you for finding time for this